This is one of the most famous and recognizable architectural works in India. Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan commissioned the Taj Mahal to be built in the 1630s to memorialize his wife. This world-famous mausoleum was just one part of the rich cultural legacy the Mughal Empire left India. But the history behind the empire could soon be taught differently. And that's because in 2023, a whole chapter on Mughals was removed from textbooks in India. With Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janta Party, or BJP, championing Hindu nationalism, the deletion of the Muslim empire's history hardly seemed like a coincidence. In the 2023 textbook revision, sections about Darwin's theory of evolution, which contradicts Hinduism's creation narrative, and Mahatma Gandhi's assassination by a Hindu nationalist gunman have also been removed. So why is India's government trying to rewrite the country's history? History textbooks have long been a BJP battleground. The government-run National Council of Educational Research and Training, or NCERT, was established over a decade after India's independence from Britain. The textbooks that had been continued to be used in the first 10 years or so were the old ones which had been written during the British period, and they presented a very colonial view of Indian history. Mirdullah Mukherjee is one of nearly 250 historians and educators who signed a public letter protesting the NCERT's latest changes to textbooks. What we also had by the beginning of the 60s was a beginnings of a resurgence of this religious nationalism in the political sphere. In 1977, the Janta Party, parts of which later became the BJP, won its first majority in parliament and challenged NCERT history books for being too friendly to Muslim rulers. But the textbooks survived after public and political controversy. The next push to change history came when the BJP came into power in the late 90s. The BJP became the ruling party after it pushed a Hindu nationalist agenda, and some BJP politicians built a climate of anti-Muslim hate and violence. And the party attempted to change the history books again. The government first removed well-respected historians from positions of power, and placed political appointees and non-historian nationalists on a government council that grants funding to scholars. The BJP released new textbooks in the early 2000s, which were heavily criticized for having factual errors and what some said was a falsified or distorted history. These textbooks were quickly scrapped after the BJP lost office. But as the saying goes, third time's a charm. Once in power again in 2014, Modi's government wasted no time before appointing a new culture minister, Mahesh Sharma, a Hindu nationalist with a history of making anti-Muslim comments. A 14-person committee was also appointed to rewrite Indian history and established that India's earliest inhabitants were the ancestors of modern Hindus. Sharma said a Hindu first version of Indian history would become part of a standard curriculum. And this is central to the entire story. See, after India's founding, the country's dominant political parties championed secularism for decades. But when the BJP came to power, that started to change. Remember that the BJP is a Hindu nationalist party closely associated with the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, or RSS. That's an organization that champions Hindutva, an ideology that promotes the idea that India should be a Hindu nation. And it's incredibly well-funded and well-organized. The RSS's educational arms have run schools since the 50s, some of which teach Hindu scripture as historical fact. The educational arms run nearly 12,000 schools serving 3.2 million students. As the BJP's and RSS's influence has grown, Hindu nationalism has seeped deeper into the fabric of Indian society. So there's a whole version of Indian history which forms the backdrop to their attempt today to set up a Hindu supremacist regime. Between 2022 and 2023, in the name of reducing school workload during pandemic recovery, the NCERT rolled out another round of textbook deletions. But what's targeted set off an alarm. An entire chapter about the history of the Mughal courts was deleted. This is very significant because it ties up with the whole uh, anti-Muslim bias of the current politics. But it wasn't just erasing Muslims from history. Sections on democracy and diversity were deleted. The history of the Congress party, a major political party for decades, and the BJP's main opposition today was also erased. The NCRT removed details on the hardships historically faced by Dalits under India's caste system, which divides people into separate social classes from birth until death. They also took out a chapter on rights movements by women, Dalits, and farmers' unions. 
Other controversial changes include the erasure of references to the RSS member who assassinated Mahatma Gandhi, as well as Gandhi's opposition to a Hindu-only India. There is strong discomfort within this ideology and these political formations with any notion that Hindus, certain sections of Hindus could have been discriminating against other sections of Hindus because it goes against the presentation of the entire Hindu past as something glorious and pure and something that has only to be venerated and not looked at critically. Also, lines were changed around the 2002 Gujarat riots, during which Hindu mobs killed around 1,000 Muslims. Modi was chief minister of the state of Gujarat at the time. A Human Rights Watch investigation found evidence linking Modi's office to the riots, with some sources even saying the riots had Modi's blessing. Gujarat was also one of the first states to change its textbooks in the 90s. The historian Mushirul Hassan observed that in some Gujarat schools, students were taught that Islam only teaches atrocity. The whole ideology of the BJP and the RSS is based on a certain understanding of Indian history, a certain distorted, uh, even falsified version of Indian history, where, as I said, the ancient uh, pre-Islamic Indian past is presented as a glorious golden age, pure, unsullied, no blemishes of any kind. And then there is supposed to be a long period of suppression where the Hindu religion is suppressed. But Hindu first changes go beyond history books. Muslim or Urdu names of streets and cities have been changed into Hindu names. A right-wing Hindu organization painted Urdu or Muslim street signs black in 2015. One of them was later officially changed from a Mughal emperor's name to that of a pro-BJP Indian leader. See, this whole uh, effort to change uh, names, to drop names which have any suggestion or resemble or sound like uh, Muslim names, is part of the whole process of trying to invisibilize uh, the minorities. Another thing that happens is ghettoizing through discrimination, through sometimes targeted violence. It's a precursor often to genocide. Because the first thing that you do is that you wipe them out of uh, any public uh, space. This then becomes the foundation for more radical kinds of discrimination, exclusion. By manipulating history and cultural legacy, the BJP is erasing India's secular democratic tradition, the history of its Muslim residents, and even unfavorable incidents in the party's own past. Some argue that through this decades-long political agenda, the BJP is actively working to change what it means to be Indian. And perhaps most importantly, who gets to call themselves Indian? We see this attempt to change history, to distort history, as a kind of precursor to much worse things that could possibly happen. And which is why we are making a noise about it. Because we think it must be stopped here. BJP's Hindu nationalist agenda has increasingly had real-life impacts, particularly on the country's almost 200 million Muslims. In many instances, Muslims are de facto second-class citizens. Many face housing and employment discrimination, and others have reported increased violence. The alarm has been set off because the BJP uh, has now been in power at the national level for nine years, and another election is coming next year. And as they are growing more and more confident and uh, conscious of and, you know, willing to use state power for pushing their ideological agenda, things become more and more dangerous. If you're interested in exploring more about the origins of Hindutva and Modi's impact on India, watch this explainer from AJ+.